Today is the end of the secret page in Brutimo EX Plus. We've come a long way, but we're finally closing off the final few toughest levels in the game that all have their unique gimmicks. So let's get started on the final stretch. Today's first level is Luck. It's a conveyor belt level with only sprouts and cherry bombs, where a sprout's ability is to transform to any random plant. Unfortunately, we can't get evil plants, but we can get about anything else on the seed selection menu, including upgrade and aquatic plants. Obviously, you need a lot of luck to beat luck. But the level is not really difficult at the end of the day, since it was designed to just be a fun level to play through. The conveyor belt moves very fast here, giving us lots of plants to work with. This level has 4 flags, meaning we're in for the long haul and we can't just keep every plant we get. Weak plants like puff shrooms need to be dug up to free space up for more powerful plants. This is especially important for the tiles adjacent to plant urns, with an extremely limited supply of plant urns and we need to rely on them to double our damage output. This is why I have the best plants like Cattail, Gatling Pea, as well as Winter Melon strategically next to the planter and after several rerolls. With such a messy defense, we're still able to easily beat up the hordes of Giga Reanchors the game throws at us, thanks to the amount of cherry bombs the game gives us. And that's mostly why this level isn't as painful as its raining seeds. Having spare cherry bombs helps mitigate the variance in plants we get, and helps deal with any individual threats. The level is pretty simple, and it was a relief to finally have fun on a level that is based on only randomness without the insane difficulty that comes with most levels in Bruno Mode EX+. The next level is called Tooth for Tooth. Well, it has... Oh no! This level isn't actually that bad even with both Conan Pea Shooter Zombies and Bucket at Gatling P Zombies, because it's a conveyor belt level and doesn't have a special gimmick. However, what is special is that this is the level which showcases primarily the Hypno Shroom, as the only plants we get from the conveyor belt are Lily Pads, Hypno Shrooms, and Blovers. Essentially, we have to use only Hypno Shroom to beat the zombies, making this somewhat similar to the minigame Zombies vs Zombies from PvZ Expansion, or Master. But then, I had a pretty big problem to deal with. More so, Gargantuan. Hello there. Well, obviously, we can't hypnotize a Gargantuar, but we have nothing else but Blover to do damage to Gargantuars. So, we're basically screwed in lane 3 is what we're being told. Nonetheless, I kept trying to stall it out with the copious amounts of lily pads the game gives us until the inevitable demise of our pool cleaner. Not only were Bungie ambushes a big problem, just take a look at this amount of zombies. How the hell are you supposed to defend with only Hypno Shrooms? Moreover... Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. They are also naturally spawning Gargantuas this level. Looks like there was a very good reason for why we got so many Blovers, and we should've definitely saved them up. With this being only a 2 flag level, the total number of Gargantuars is not that egregious. We got another natural Gargantuar in lane 2, so we had to let our lawnmower there go too. Unfortunately, just that little amount of Gargantuars was the demise of us, because very unfortunately, we had to deal with 2 more Gargantuars in the final wave. Also doesn't help Flag Zombie is apparently immune to Hypno Shroom, so that's a new discovery right there. Now I had a good idea of what to expect in this level, my plan was simple. Min-max the Hypno Shrooms and Hypnotize Zombies as late as possible to stall as much as possible. The more we stall, the more Blovers we can stock up into our conveyor belt to prepare against Gargantuars. To do this, I also have to plant all these useless Lily Pads to free up the conveyor. I make sure to be as conservative as possible with all my blowvers, only using each one very occasionally to blow away the fog to get a better view of what we have to deal with. We make it to the first flag with a stockpile of blowvers, as well as with no gargantuars that make our life miserable thanks to us proactively hypnotizing target zombies before they die. Just to compare, at this point in our last run, we already lost like 3 lawnmowers, and right now we're keeping everything nice and packed to the right, without much advancement. This time, with proper planning, we are also able to actually stall out the natural Gargantuars by hypnotizing the zombies that walk in front of them to give us just that little bit of time we need. It's really important to delay the usage of our lawnmowers as late as possible to prevent any new Gargantuars from spawning in lanes without lawnmowers in future waves. This ensures that we can have enough lawnmowers to deal with all the Gargantuars the game throws at us by manipulating the lanes they spawn in. Simple as that, we beat two for tooth. The next level is to the left. We already had a level where zombies came from the left side of the lawn, so I'm fairly certain it's going to be a different gimmick this time around. In fact, we're going to see what this level's gimmick is immediately. What? All zombies now have reached hacks. In fact, three extra tiles. Well, this will certainly be a challenge, because this means zombies are basically three tiles closer to our plants, giving us much less response time. 
I restarted immediately as my chat told me a way I could cheese this level using a somewhat unintended interaction as the result of the zombies' rechecks. Potato mines that are armed have infinite health to prevent them from being eaten while detonating. This is to make sure a potato mine that is still coming out of the ground doesn't get eaten. But in this level, since the zombies will eat them 3 tiles away, it will never explode and hence stall forever. With this permanent stalling technique, surely it's impossible to lose, right? Well, no. We still have to kill letterheads as they can activate our potato mine and put a stop to the perma stall. I also have to remind myself that we're not dealing with only basic zombies this level, but also pole vaulters. Pole vaulting zombies also now detect plants, 3 tiles ahead of them, and jump a total of 4 tiles. We got the long jump champion right here, leaping over half the roof in one jump. Thankfully, pole vaulters lose their reach hacks after using their jump and return to normal, so we can just put a tonic behind our potato mine to actually deal with them fully. Zombies with reach hacks also cannot eat plants not 3 tiles away, so for example, this flower pot is completely invincible since no zombies can be 3 tiles away and in front of it. Surely, there isn't a way that we could possibly lose this level with this brilliant cheese. Bye, have a great time! Well, the fastest pogo zombie in PvZ history, across the entire roof in less than a single second. Perfectly balanced and only about 8 times faster than a normal chocolate pogo zombie. We're also getting overwhelmed by the number of zombies building up wave after wave, and our potato mines are just getting destroyed left and right by letterheads or angry dancers. Pretty sure these melon bolts are not really helping us stay alive right now, so time to change up our strategy a bit. Obvious choice right here. Since we don't have time to plant out melon bolts or winter melons, I switched to Doomshroom to easily clear out any crowds that build up over time. However, the process of setting up our column of potato mines was not well with no resistance, as we had to deal with many more letterheads this run, significantly slowing down our progress. But, the power of Doomshroom is certainly strong enough to mitigate the tougher early game here, as it can easily clear out the pole vaulters and backup dancers using a Doomshroom. This meant that I could actually get a strategical attacking plant, the Starfruit. Since plants on the 9th column are invincible, we can get away by planting starfruits there and utilize all 5 of its shots. Utilizing doesn't mean it would work, as I also forgot about the existence of shuffle zombies which plow for the potato mine effortlessly. Starfruits really suck against ladder zombies as stars must kill the ladder before being able to hit the zombie itself, making shuffle zombies just as devastating as normal against this defense. I tried doing a new early game build order for a stronger economy, utilizing partitioning. We only defend a few lanes in the first few waves to immediately plant potato mines into the fifth column. This didn't really work as I was sacrificing roof cleaners in an awkward time due to the disparity of speeds between zombies, causing multiple waves to get killed one after the other. I was quickly schooled by the angry dancer about why we needed to get as many potato mines on the board as quickly as possible to defend, and not to greet by planting less of them. With what I just learned, I now utilize the rake to defend one lane, while two more potato mines will usually defend off the first wave, depending on whether there are two zombies in the same lane. This creates an initial safety net early on to prevent us from losing to any potential early game threats, and we can easily set up our sun production safely behind this potato mine wall. I attempt to utilize Starford again, but to no avail. Since we're doing so much damage to zombies that stand on top of them, we kill them too quick and end up getting overwhelmed too quickly by zombies still alive in other lanes. Me trying to utilize Starford is just absolutely sad because the same story speaks for itself. We simply kill the zombies in just one particular area too quickly, and then get ourselves overwhelmed everywhere else. It also doesn't help that pole vaulters are super threatening. The moment we get overwhelmed by everything on the screen, and take our eyes off another pole vaulter in another lane, oops, it jumps straight to the end of the lane and enters the house. Since Starfruit is doing way too much damage in a small area around itself, we have a different plant that can hopefully fill in the same role as Starfruit while not killing everything too fast. This is finally the level where Split Pea can be used, since we can finally utilize its double backwards shot by placing it into the knife column where it cannot be touched. How relevant is it really though? Um, unfortunately, it seems like it's still completely useless because whatever it kills is just something that our Doomshroom would have killed anyways. It's so annoying that whenever there's a level where Split Pea seems just a bit usable, it's still garbage because Doomshroom is always better. Pretty sure we all know where Split Pea is going in the tier list when I do make that video. Out of all the backwards shooting plants, Starfruit failed, Split Pea failed, so I suppose the last plant we need to try is the Gloomshroom, as we can now utilize them without pumpkins. You might know I haven't really made use of Gloomshrooms in Bruder Mode EX+. They're busted in vanilla, but they fail short to melons as Gloomshrooms cannot be buffed by plant turns. This level seems perfect for Gloomshroom, 
They're completely invincible on the ninth column, and we have zombies guaranteed to be grouped up near them with our potato mine wall. It was very easy to set up gloom shrooms early on, and they cleared out the early waves of zombies with ease. Another nice thing is that they also don't kill zombies too quickly, so we still get a quite bit of good stalling time every wave. With almost a full column of gloom shrooms and also a full potato mine blockade, this will easily clear out everything the game sends us. With most conventional mainstream options already tried and exhausted, it's time to pull out the more obscure plants, because there's not much I can do against a pogo zombie that's this fast. Clearly, Magnus Shroom can stop pogo zombies from bouncing across the whole board if Tongnuts can't. But I'm also bringing Gold Magnet, which you've probably forgot about because the last time I've used it was 9 months ago, where I used it for 1 level for 30 seconds. A gold magnet on its own doesn't do anything except collect coins, but a second gold magnet in the same column or a row makes it so all zombies between them start taking chilling damage. Now first of which, we're using it this level since plants placed on the ninth column can take damage, so we can plant them and let them kill any zombies that pass through them. Unfortunately, gold magnets cannot damage zombies directly on the top of them, and zombies that are eaten our potato mines in the fifth column also can get hurt by our gold magnets. To actually do damage to zombies, we need another gold magnet at the left hand side to create a connection between the left and right hand side and start damaging all zombies between them. And here's another twist, since Magnus Room has full board range, it can remove pogo sticks as soon as pogo zombies come. But since pogo zombies don't have reach hacks without our pogo stick, this means they can eat up our gold magnets at the ninth column directly after having their pogo sticks removed. Not only that, this also means they can march their way to our potato mines and blow them up after they lose their pogo stick. So, Magnus Room kind of backfired on us real fast. This quickly led to the infiltration of the zombies in the bottom two lanes where our potato mines just detonated. With no blower to push back the zombies, I lost a bunch of plants before my instant kills came back from cooldown. Not long after was the introduction of Gargantuars. As you'd expect, Gargantuars also have reach hacks, making them the hair metal Gargantuars from Neon Mixtape Tour. How great! And for obvious reasons, Potato Mines even with infinite health are no match for the smash attack of the Gargantuar, which can instantly kill it regardless. We're going to need more instant kills to survive against Gargantuars, so I had to make a cut somewhere, and it had to be the Tallnut as its only purpose was to stop pole vaulters. Instead of Tallnut, we will be utilizing Squash instead. To kill off pole vaulters, I'm banking on Gold Magnet to have enough damage to take out pole vaulters that land on the 4th column. Before we can get enough Gold Magnets to set up though, we will just be relying on Potato Mines and Squash to temporarily defend them off easy enough when we are free of them. Despite its extremely slow recharge of being an upgrade plan, I was able to get two pairs of gold magnets before the first flag, so we won't have to worry about lane 1 or 2 anymore. But you'll see the obvious problem with my bolt order. The fact that I built my gold magnets in the outer lanes first is actually detrimental, and you can see it right here. Since I placed a pair of gold magnets in the bottom lane, this dancing zombie in lane 4 will keep spawning a backup dancer in lane 5 over and over again after the backup dancer dies. Because I'm not killing the dancing zombie, this setup lets us spawn bungee ambushes over and over again by spawning infinite backup dancers. Definitely did not intend for this to happen. By the time I realized, it was too late already. To avoid the infinite backup dancer spawning, I prioritized building my gold magnets in the three middle rows first. This is because dancing zombies cannot spawn in the side rows on roof. My better early game by being aware of having to build up gold magnets immediately also lets me get down four pairs of gold magnets before the first flag, which is a drastic improvement. From here, it seems like it shouldn't be possible to lose to anything but Gargantuars, as we have an essentially impenetrable defense. Lone Gargantuars aren't even that hard to deal with. It will smash our potato mine, but just one instant kill to cut its health down will finish it off after it has taken enough damage from Gold Magnet. However, that was against Lone Gargantuars. Once the second flag came and it had multiple Gargantuars, I was screwed. They smashed down the potato mines, and football zombies get a free pass to run for and eat up everything. It seems like not even infinite HP potato mines will be sufficient to beat the zombies with reach hacks. After what just happened, I imagined that it must have been better to use Ice Shroom instead of Doom Shroom, just so that we can solve out football zombies and not die so miserably. Another cut I made was to Magnet Shrooms, as just Gold Magnet itself is already strong enough to kill Pogo zombies before they reach the end of the roof, as well as Angry Dancers. From what I can see before the second flag, Ice Shroom seems about just as effective as Doom Shroom, thanks to just how much damage Gold Magnet does while the zombies are frozen. Well, that's at least what I wished to be true until I realized how come Gargantuars died so fast. The reality is that the damage of Gold Magnets is actually unevenly spread across all 5 lanes. Zombies in the middle rows will actually take more damage earlier due to Gold Magnet having 3 connections with other Gold Magnets, while the side rows only have 2 connections. We ended up having to spend an instant kill on the Gargantuar on the bottom row, 
while the Gargantuas in the middle row actually took enough damage to just die to the Gold Magnet. This problem with power disparity isn't even the biggest for us. The fact that I cut spending by getting rid of Magnet Shrooms means that we now struggle against Shovel Zombies. Gold Magnets don't do enough damage to kill their Shovel before they start shoveling up everything, and they cleared a way for Football Zombies to rush into our house once again. As I had more than 1,500 sun at the end of my last attempt, clearly cutting out Doom Shroom wasn't necessary, so I put it back in for Ice Shroom. However, we still struggled massively against Shovel Zombies. We don't have consistent methods of dealing with them, and letting just one fruit is devastating to our intricate defense. Once we lose just one Gold Magnet, we lose defense in that lane. But then because there's Dancing Zombies, this starts the infinite backup dancer spawning loop, and oops, here's a bunch of Grave Ambush Zombies from all the Pole Vaulter Graves. Since instant kills recharge too slowly for us to reactively deal with Shovel Zombies, I started stocking up Doom Shrooms at the back. This lets us detonate Doom Shrooms when needed by using a Coffee Bean, but lets our Doom Shroom Seed Packets to keep recharging so we can keep stocking more of them up. To deal with Shovel Zombies when we don't have Doom Shroom, we just need our smaller instant kills. They should be sufficient as there shouldn't be too many Shovel Zombies. And as mentioned, just Gold Magnet's damage is enough to kill off Brigantors in the middle lanes. So this means that we can beat everything and make it to the final wave of the level. The keyword is make it to, not survive, because we couldn't deal with the Grave Ambush Zombies. Obviously, I wasn't busting the Grave fast enough, and the Grave Ambush Zombies ended up killing me. And once again, I ended up losing my next run as I didn't set up my Gold Magnets in the early game properly, leading to an infinite backup dance responding loop and we lose the Grave Ambushes once again. So, I wanted to make the one last change so we could beat this level. Ultimately, Imitated Potato Mine was just redundancy. While it made for a consistently good early game, we needed more variety to answer the various threats in this level. I cut Imitated Potato Mine to include Blover, which gives us an alternative defensive option against any threat, other than killing it outright. The early game is much worse as I now have to spend Blovers to stall out zombies in lanes with no potato mines, so I was only able to set up two pairs of gold magnets before the first flag. Thankfully, I was very lucky to not see any Shovel Zombies disrupting our setup process, and was able to plant all five pairs of gold magnets before Gargantua started coming in. As you could have noticed, I didn't really stock up on any Doom Shrooms this run, and that's because just Blover is strong enough that we don't need to do that. One Blover pushes everything in a lane back to the start, and from there, they will take enough damage from our Gold Magnets to die. This works for basically every zombie in this level. With Blover's fast recharge, we can easily clear out lane by lane. Or, when we get overwhelmed, we can still pull the trigger on a Doom Shroom and wipe off the board. And surprisingly, Gold Magnet is going to be the plant that allows us to beat the level where zombies have reach hacks. Who knew having more reach could actually be a bad thing? Now we're onto the next level, called Glove War 2. I mean... Why are you running? Why are you running? In the first Glove War, we had to choose 10 pre-planted plants and move them around with our gardening gloves to beat the level. This time, we only have 7 seed slots, and we also have to play in the normal choose your seeds format to build our own economy. We also have a much tougher early game as we have to deal with newspaper zombies and Conan P shooters. Just 2 waves in, we're already dead against newspaper zombies because we only have puff shrooms. This is pretty reminiscent of the horrible early game in P2Melon. Since there's balloon zombies to deal with, I need to bring cactus, but then there's also catapult zombies so I need to bring umbrella leaf. To deal with Gargantuars, we pretty much need Melon Pot with Planter to deal enough damage, and Tallnut seems pretty necessary to then survive against newspapers. It doesn't seem like we can spare a slot anywhere for Imitator Puff Shroom to make this early game less miserable. So I just have to hope that one of our Puff Shrooms can freeze the newspaper zombies in its tracks. Of course it doesn't happen until all our Puff Shrooms are already dead. The early game is just very unforgiving. We need so much luck to be on our side to make sure newspaper zombies don't just completely trample all over our mushrooms. Puff Shroom spam is also simply not enough damage to deal with the Conan Pea Shooter Zombies. Just because their Zombotny Peas can't hit Puff Shrooms doesn't mean that we can defend them when they have so much health for one basic equivalent. It certainly is ugly, but I have to move around all my Sun Shrooms to safe lanes so they don't get eaten, and then sacrifice my lawnmowers one by one just to get a kickstart to the economy. And then I attempt to start building up a defense, only to get completely destroyed by how many newspaper zombies the game keeps sending at us, and clearly this isn't going to work out. To not just sacrifice every lawnmower to defend the early game, I decided to plant Cactus as some soft defense against Conan P Shooter Zombies before switching to Melon Bolts. The amount of micromanaging to make sure we have as many Sun Shrooms and Puff Shrooms on the board at once is still extremely stressful though. I have to make so many decisions in such a short amount of time, and also perform all these actions to move every plant to safety if it's in danger while ensuring we have enough damage. And in fact, I said I wasn't even doing a good job at all at min-maxing our economy here. 
I was putting too much focus on everything already on the lawn, and I'm not planting Sunshroom off cooldown to maximize our economy. With so many newspaper zombies, it made sense I was struggling to focus on building up our economy. Even Talnas aren't holding up for very long, and we already have to start replacing them this early in the level. But then, of course the game tells us to go screw ourselves as it sends two letterheads in exactly the two lanes without lawnmowers and only one puff from each. Well, isn't that a way to go out? Obviously, when you have to deal with Kona Shooter zombies, I suppose it is inevitable that we have to go back to using the garlic variation of the dumb strategy, but with only 7 slots. The garlic variation of the dumb strategy utilizes Doomstrom as the primary form of damage, but by diverting zombies of garlic into empty lanes to stall and make space for some producers. I had to go for a very minimalistic approach of the dumb strategy. No supporting instant kills at all, just blow over the kill balloon zombies and also grave buster to make space for garlics. Unfortunately, newspaper zombies have something else to tell us when we try to do the dumb strategy with no supporting instant kills. In hindsight, it was a bad idea to spend Doomstream when we didn't have a Talna in every lane with a newspaper zombie. So surely, if we now also have Talna blocking, we're fine. For this level's early game to be beatable, we need RNGs to be on our side and not send us too many newspaper zombies. I also need to employ a strategy I call juggling. I always want to have a spot where I can move a damaged tallnut so it can heal back up while the fresh one tank for the Zombotany piece. This juggling strategy needs to keep going for the rest of the level so we can maximize the number of tallnuts we can get. These spare tallnuts are very important because we need a lot of tallnuts to tank for the masses of catapult zombies we get thrown at later in the level. They will help protect our sunshrooms from getting destroyed. Sunshrooms aren't expendable at this level when we need to sustain our constant blower usage against Gargantuars. When Gargantuars come in, we need to pivot from our garlic strategy. Remember all those spare Talnas we got in the early game? We now need to change to the Talna variation. Our garlics will not and cannot survive against the masses of Gargantuars from the second flag onwards, so what I did was to reorganize my entire defense on the wave before the second flag. I did it here as I could isolate the Gargantuars in this wave by using a Doomshroom and then stalling them out with Blowfers, giving me an easy time with no frets to reorder everything. Or you could do what I did here. I juggled a Talna by moving it back and forth so the Gargantuar stopped to hit but always miss. Past the second flag, the game now becomes absolute chaos mode, when the plentiful amount of newspaper zombies is certainly to break through one by one. I had to monitor each Talna extremely carefully to make sure I knew when I needed to spend blowers to stall or move another Talna into the spot of an old one when it dies. At this point, I was unable to really protect my sunshrooms anymore as most or all taunts are being used to block off few shooter zombies or other stray imps and newspaper zombies. But that was fine, as this is the reason why we had banked up so much sun earlier. Now we can freely use up all that reserve sun to doomstream wave after wave and beat them all. A bit more stalling against these gargantuars, and we have this level in the bag with double doomstream in the final wave. The final level of the secret page is Colonial Awareness, Jalapeno Zombies, and Gargantuars. Well, that combination again, so we're going to have to do Imitated Doomstream to survive against Jalapeno Zombies. But you may be interested in this level's gimmick. You'll see it when this bucket head finishes eating the puff shroom. The gimmick this level is when any plant is placed, that tile the plant is placed on will have its seed locked into it for the rest of the game. Once we plant a puff shroom in a tile, we may only plant puff shrooms in that tile for the entire level, and so on and so forth. Obviously, puff shrooms sucks with this level's gimmick, so I was quick to restart to switch to a new strategy. Now we know the gimmick, the solution seems pretty obvious, to do a permanent defense that cannot be broken through. But that's actually not what the solution is, as there's a simpler one. The dumb strategy actually still works for this gimmick, despite us not being able to flexibly place our smaller instant kills anywhere we please, but a bit of simple planning helps with that. With the tall nut variation of the dumb strategy, we can basically make a symmetrical defense that allows us to have 4 tiles of extra space to allocate space for all our instant plants. I reserve my entire 6th column to squash and potato mine. This is to make sure that we are able to deal with fast zombies without doom troops. By fast zombies, 90% of the time it's letterheads. As you noticed, I left my 7th column open. That's where I'll use my blower, which will serve as a fail safe if my potato mine or squash is on cooldown and we don't have doom shroom. And obviously, for Ice Shroom, we just need any one spot on the lawn as it works the exact same on any tile it is planted on. We will just plant Ice Shrooms in the same tile for the whole level. 
now I'm watching myself back playing this, I'm also not sure why I didn't use my pumpkins when they don't actually create a seed of themselves since they can be planted on every plant. And if I use pumpkin to protect my Tana from being laddered over, this probably couldn't have happened. Now in hindsight, I probably should have restarted right here because a gravestone on column 1 is like a situation where you probably 1% of the time, but I thought Doomstream would be enough to save me later. As more Gargantros flooded onto the lawn, I also didn't plant any pumpkins to stop imps from advancing more, which was definitely a mistake on my part, and I also didn't replant some producers. Nonetheless, I survived to the final wave, but guess what spawns from that gravestone on the first column? To beat this level, I just needed to not have a skill issue. I was super sloppy last run and didn't really min-max my economy and also didn't utilize my pumpkins to protect tall nuts. The classic combo of using a pumpkin to protect our tall nuts to let it heal back up is super effective here as we cannot plant multiple tall nuts in a row. Apart from that, pumpkins are also really useful against ladder zombies. We can plant pumpkins behind tall nuts to get rid of the ladder once the pumpkin dies to a ladder zombie. Additionally, it also offers protection against imps, which I didn't utilize last run and ended up making me lose as I had lost way too many sunshrooms. Now even after I lost the lane to a jalapeno zombie, I still aim to rebuild it completely to maximize our economy as much as possible, as we need to sustain our instance usage. Basically, rinse and repeat the instant spam cycle. We make sure to plant pumpkins reactively to deal with ladder zombies, and also ensure we have enough sun for us to spam blowers. Slowly but surely, we can recover from our losses and rebuild up our wall of tall nuts to continue block off all pole vaulters and from there on out, we're closing onto the final wave of the level. To beat the final wave, we obviously use Ice Shroom with two Doom Shrooms, and that beats Colonial Awareness, the final secret page level of today. Now, you may be wondering, RCCH, where is shorting your zombie? You haven't shown this on a video yet. Well, you're in luck, because I couldn't beat the level. The level bested me as the toughest level in the game, so I'm going to be doing a completely separate video about levels I couldn't beat. To find out why these levels were so difficult that I actually gave up on trying to beat them, you'll have to either watch my live streams or wait for my next video where I explain everything. I'll also include some levels I didn't want to show, like uh, this level which is really exciting and this level which you know has a lot of plans for you to see. And guess what? There's actually like more than 5 levels I couldn't beat. Some are just outright blatantly not tested, and some of them are just too difficult even for a tryhard gamer like me. And I suppose that's the end of the secret page levels in Bruno Mode EX+. Or maybe not if you count the next episode, because it will contain the secret page levels I couldn't beat. So if you want to watch me struggle again, then make sure to subscribe to catch my next video. Thank you to our channel members for supporting the RCCS channel. For now, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.